Welcome to my lecture online. Now we're going to take a look at the four basic thermodynamic processes in the light of the first law of thermodynamics and what is peculiar about each of the four processes in looking at them side by side it gives us a better form and a better idea. So we're going to use the first law of thermodynamics where the change in internal energy is equal to the heat added to the gas minus the work done by the gas. We use PV equals nRT we have the definition for work done and we have the definition of the change in the internal energy of a gas which is the number of moles times C sub V times the change in the temperature which means that there's, if there's no change in the temperature there's no change in internal energy. Notice we have values for C sub V and C sub B for three different kinds of gases monatomic, diatomic and triatomic. These are ideal numbers in the real world some of these are not quite that but close enough and realizing that C sub P is always going to be 1R bigger than C sub V for each of the three types. And there is a gamma variable here, which is the ratio of C sub P over C sub V. All right. So the four thermodynamic processes are the isobaric process, where the pressure remains constant, isovolumetric constant, used to be called isochoric constant, or isochoric process, where the volume is constant, we have the isothermic process where the temperature is constant and the adiabatic process where none of the three state variables are constant. Notice that if the pressure remains constant we go from one state of the gas to another state of the gas and the line is horizontal because the pressure cannot change. When the volume is, remains constant we go from one state of the gas to the other state of the gas and that's a vertical direction because again we cannot have a change in the volume. If we have an isothermic process, that means we go from one state of the gas to the other state of the gas and we have to move along an isotherm because the temperature remains constant. And, oop, I forgot a G there. So nothing constant, there we go. And uh, when we have an adiabatic process, we go from one isotherm to another isotherm because temperature doesn't remain constant. Notice that the pressure doesn't remain constant and the volume doesn't remain constant. And I guess it would be better if I add a P and a V to each of these diagrams. These are all PV diagrams, so that doesn't change. So P and V, make sure we have that complete. All right, so now let's take a look at what's peculiar about each of the four processes. In the first process, we have that the work is always equal to P times delta V. We can write it like this because we know that the pressure remains constant. So all we need to know is the change in the volume, what the pressure was, and that gives us the work done by the gas and it would be the same as with the area underneath this curve. By the way, work done is always the area underneath the curve on a PV diagram. The change in internal energy is always going to be N C sub V delta T. That doesn't matter what the process is, that is always the case. That's where the confusion comes in. It says, well, what if the, the pressure remains constant? Why use C sub V? Because delta U always uses C sub V and never uses C sub P. C sub P com only comes in when we calculate Q, the heat added to the gas, and we only use C sub P once when the pressure remains constant. This is the only place in any of the four processes where we ever use C sub P. Just for that one thing only, for Q, heat added to the gas, when pressure is constant, and under no other circumstance. We always use C sub V for everything else. How about the isovolumetric process? Well, work is zero. Why is work zero? Because there's no area need to curve. The gas does not change volume. If the gas doesn't change volume, it cannot do work. So that means that if we set work equal to zero, the change in internal energy equals the heat added to the gas, and that's what we have over here. So the delta U is going to be N C sub V delta T, because that's always the case, and therefore Q must also equal N C sub V delta T, because they're equal to each other. How about an isothermic process? In that case, there's no change in internal energy because the change in internal energy depends on the change in the temperature. If there's zero temperature change, there's zero internal energy change. <coughs> Excuse me. So that means if we set delta U equal to zero, that means Q will become equal to W. That's what we have over here. And since W is equal to nRT times the natural log of the final volume over the initial volume, Q will be equal to the same thing as well. Notice that if you don't know nRT, for example, you don't know number of moles, so you don't know the temperature, you can also replace nRT by the pressure 
times the volume and anywhere along the path, typically at the initial point or at the final point. So if you know the pressure volume at A, or you know the pressure volume at B, NRT can be replaced by either one of these, because they're equal. We know that from our ideal gas equation. And so that's how you calculate the work done, and that means that's also equal to the heat added to the gas. In other words, in an isothermic process, all the heat added to the gas is used to do work. None of it is kept by the gas, so the internal energy doesn't change, the temperature doesn't change. In an adiabatic process, nothing is constant. But we do know that Q must equal zero. There's no heat exchange into the gas, because typically with an adiabatic process, the process happens so quickly, there's no time for heat to go into the gas or come out of the gas. So if we set Q equal to zero, delta U equals negative W. In other words, all the work done comes from the internal energy of the gas, so however much work we do, that amount of energy will come out of the gas. That's why W equals negative delta U. Delta U is always equal to N C sub V delta T. So if we know N and we know delta T, we can calculate delta U. That means we can calculate work done. Sometimes it's also handy to know that the relationship between pressure and volume in an adiabatic process can be calculated like this. Gamma is defined as the ratio of C sub P over C sub V. We also have a relationship between temperature and volume in an adiabatic process. These are only good for the adiabatic process, and you can see then that sometimes they come in handy. Notice we cut across isotherms because the temperature changes. We see the change in the pressure, we see the change in the volumes. Everything changes in an adiabatic process. And there, there you can see the relationship between the four thermodynamic processes and what's circled in the red box here, that is the key to each of the four processes. So hang on to that, remember that. What's on the board, essentially, you should try to memorize that. And that is how it's done.